Hey guys, it's JM. So over the holidays, uh, there was a farmer that reached out to me that told me he was moving and needed to sell some drives. So I picked them up for him. Uh, he sold me some 12 and 8 terabyte WD Easy stores and there were some uh, Seagate drives in there. I ended up actually shucking them. I'm not a big fan of USB, but I, I hate shucking, but um, I just don't like USB. So <laughs> um, now one of the things I did when I shucked the drives is first updated the firmware. So on the Seagate drives, when you shuck them, you can go to their website and actually type in the serial number and it'll allow you to actually download the latest firmware that's for the uh, internal drives as well. So that's good. I updated the firmware on the drives. You can't quite do that in WD drives because they use a different firmware. But uh, the other thing I do is look for shingled magnetic recording drives. So if you buy drives that are sub eight terabyte, there's a chance that they are drive managed SMR, which means that the firmware in the actual drive manages the shingled magnetic recording. Now, uh, WD and Seagate have gotten better about labeling their drives, CMR or conventional magnetic recording versus SMR or shingled magnetic recording. Now, what SMR does is actually lays the tracks out and it writes them kind of in a shingle so that they're closer together because the read heads on a hard drive are actually smaller than the write heads. So if you do this in a track, you can actually get increased density in amount of data you store on the disk. But then when you go to write the data, especially if you do a try to, ran, try to do a random write, it blows out a, a big chunk of the data. So SMR performance is really, really bad for random write, uh, but for sequential writing, it's just fine. So for Chia, it's actually a great technology because you get lower cost disks and in Chia, you're sequentially writing the data over to the hard drives. You're just copying the plot files over and then you read them. So that's no big deal. Uh, now, however, yeah, I might throw these drives in an ass. I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with the eight terabyte drive. So I'm going to take a look at uh, measuring the performance of the drive. So one of the things I wanted to do today wh while I was doing this, I said it might be useful to record a quick video is a quick overview of FIO. So FIO is a tool in Linux that allows you to run performance uh, and stress test in SSD or hard drive. So you can run IO workloads to the drive and you can change the queue depth and the block size and the reads and writes, your reverse random versus sequential. So you can change basically everything. It's insanely powerful. Uh, you know, the guy who wrote it now uh, is at Facebook and he's the actually the Linux uh, kernel driver uh, for storage maintainer. And he's, you know, <laughs> you know written quite a few things. Um, so yeah, very, very powerful tool. I'm gonna give you guys a quick introduction of uh, what FIO can do. Okay, so I pulled up my Linux box. I put uh, one SSD in there just in case we wanna go benchmark that to, to do some testing. Uh, but you can see I have my uh, four hard drives here and then my boot, my boot drive here, which is my 500 gig boot drive. And then SDB, SDC, SDD, and SDE are my hard drives. Uh, it looks like I got uh, two 12 terabyte drives and two eight terabyte drives. And then I told you I just have this little Optane drive in there that I can use to benchmark and throw some stuff out if, if I need to. It's these, these super cheap drives I use as boot drives uh, as well. So um, FIO, you, there's two ways to run FIO. One is you can just run it at the command line and you can do FIO-help to give, but read the man page. The help is not very helpful because it doesn't actually show the commands, which is unfortunate because it's so complicated that um, there's just a giant list of commands. Uh, but what I'm going to give you is a couple examples of how to do some basic read and write drops. So if we go back to uh, LS block, we'll just pick this first 12 terabyte drive. This is this SDB. And so what we'll do is run this uh, FIO command. So we'll do uh, file name slash dev slash SDB. I'm just going to run it to the raw device. If you had a file system on here, you could also run it. We can do that here in a sec, but you can, you can run FIO to a raw device. Now, this uses the sudo command, so do not do this to your boot drive. You will you will nuke your boot drive. You will write data over over the block. So you know it's not very forgiving, just like everything in Linux. So you make sure you have the right disk. Uh, we're gonna do we'll get start out with uh, a sequential write. So you just type in write uh, direct I/O. This makes sure that the the the, the I/O doesn't get cached uh, in the kernel and, and writes it won't matter. Uh, and then the box size. So hard drives, you know, generally do well with bigger box sizes. So we'll start with one megabyte, but we can do 128K or something. Uh, the IO engine, um, IO you running is the fastest, but uh, lib AIO is kind of the general one that works on every system. Uh, runtime, obviously this is just how much time it runs in seconds. <laughs> if uh, I'm gonna 
because you guys are watching the video, I'll do a short run test, but generally I'll do a few minutes uh, to get a nice average. Uh, and the rest is just, you know, number of jobs. If you wanted to increase the number of jobs, especially for SSDs, more workers with higher Q depth equals better performance on SSDs. So you, you'll generally want to increase the number of jobs if you're testing a fast NVMe drive. Uh, and then the last one that we really care about is IO depth. So this is the target Q depth. Uh, Q depth is basically the number of commands that are waiting to get executed in the queue. And generally, if, if you're using a, a benchmark tool like this, it tries to issue enough commands that so the Q depth gets to a certain point. Now in the real world, you just give the drive commands and it executes them as fast as it can. And on SSDs, the more commands you give it, the faster it performs because it has more parallelism within an AND. Hard drives aren't very fast, so you don't really need a huge amount of Q depth. This is probably overkill uh, for hard drive 16. We could even run like Q depth of four or something. So that's it. We just run this uh, and it's going to start the process and it's going to tell us the output here. Uh, 188, uh, let's see, 213 MIB, uh, you know, and then at the end it'll report megabytes as well, but it reports uh, IOPS. So IOPS times block size equals bandwidth. So if you look at the number of IOPS times, and this is easy, right? Because we're running a one megabyte chunk, 178 IOPS times one megabyte is 178 MIB. And then it'll report us out and the bandwidth was 187 megabytes per second. Now, if you run this a little bit longer, I think we're going to, I think these drives are somewhere around like 200 megabytes a second. It's kind of weird. So all the WD easy stores that I shucked were all like 200 megabytes a second read and write, um, which tells me that maybe they, uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> they kind of tune the firmware down to make the drives all kind of perform the same because different drive models should not generally, you know, perform the same, but, uh, uh, so that's it. It's super easy. And if you guys wanted to, you know, so I'll, I'll show this, what it looks like on an SSD, just so you guys can kind of see the different performance. But if I was running a test on this and I wanted to see if this was an SMR drive, I would do something like, you know, a 4K or an 8K random write. And, oops, random write. And I would do it for like a little bit longer and then maybe a little higher Q depth, like maybe 16. Now, if you're doing this on, well, one, hard drives aren't very fast, <laughs> right? There are a couple hundred IOPS, you know, SSDs are hundreds of thousands of IOPS. Uh, but if you do this on an SMR drive, it'll be like single digit IOPS. It'll be very, very bad. Uh, you can see here, we're doing, uh, you know, 444 IOPS on a 4K random write. So this is not an SMR drive. Now, if I do that same command and I run this to that small capacity Optane drive I had in there, slash that slash nvme zero namespace one you can see just how fast uh these little guys are a, a you know q depth four or no sorry q depth 16 ran and right was 225k iops <laughs> um and this is a 58 gigabyte uh drive so this thing is these things are really cool one is because the performance doesn't change like if you have a, a small usb stick the performance or an SD card, people notice this, obviously they, they slow down quite a bit once the drive gets, once those USB gets filled up. Uh, these small Optane drives, you know, you, they don't get penalized by writes as far as having to erase the block before they write them. So uh, you can actually get really good performance in these small capacity drives. So they're kind of cool to play around with. I use them for caching and, and boot drives I mentioned. Um, but there you go. So you can play around with this, you know, what like we can even go like 128 Q depth on this drive, 4K, We'll change the engine to IO U ring. We'll see if we can get the max performance and efficiency. We'll do random read. See if we can get some good IOPS going. And <clears throat> this is this little uh, SSD. So this little 58 gigabyte drive's doing you know 413,000 IOPS and 1.6 gigabytes a second. So pretty cool. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is do a file system test. So in, uh, I made a file system here and I'm going to uh, mount my hard drive. I'm going to mount uh, SDB to mount HDD, make sure it's mounted. And what we're going to do is if we go back to that uh, command in FIO, we can go change this here. We can go We'll just say, let's do a read test. It's going to read 128K. And instead of the file name of the raw device, we'd say slash mount slash HDD. 
and then give it a file name, test.dat or whatever, whatever you want. And then the next thing we do is add a dash dash size. We can do one gigabyte span, so it'll, this will go fast. And so what it will do is actually lay out this file. It'll lay out this test file and it'll write a file that's one gigabyte and we could, you could make it however big you want. Um, and then it will run this command. So now you can see on this hard drive, this ran, uh, sequential read is going super fast. Um, you know, a couple hundred megabytes a second. Usually they'll go faster at the beginning because of the, the hard drive cache. So that's why on hard drives you got to run them a little bit longer. Uh, but there you go. So now if we go ls slash mount slash hdd, you'll see this test.dat file. Uh, so that's how to run the uh, FIO um, on a file system device. Now the last thing I'll show you is this uh, test file. So you can run FIO to a, a file name, uh, these uh, job files. So I'm going to cat this to show you what's in my job file. But in the job file, it's very similar to that command line where you say your block size, your IO depth, direct IO, IO engine, all the same stuff I had in there. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to um, say bandwidth average time and log average time. You can write the, the data to a log, which is super helpful if you're going to graph the performance data. The other thing you can do is add a bunch of different workloads and so you can, it can run through a bunch of different workloads. So if you're testing an SSD, you generally want to test a bunch of different QDEPs to see which performs the best. Uh, and then you can write this thing called Stonewall in there, which runs each one of them at a time. Now, if you don't do that, it's going to try to run them all together, which may be useful if you're trying to test some kind of complex workload, like Chia plotting, where you want to read and write at the same time. So what I'm going to do, this is going to run to slash dev slash nvme zero namespace one. That's perfectly fine. So I'm going to run pseudo FIO uh, sequential test FIO, and it's going to run. So it's going to start these processes. So this was pretty fun. I actually benchmarked. Uh, I ended up getting some eight terabyte, 10 terabyte, 12 terabyte and 14 terabyte easy stores. So I did a quick benchmark of all four just to kind of show uh, this is the right performance, the re-performance, and then the random write performance. Because I rem remember I'm trying to find out if these were SMR drives. And drum roll, uh, I mean, the performance was almost exactly the same on all four of the drives. So. WD must change the firmware to kind of uh, try to make the firm, make the performance very similar on all these different models of easy stores, uh, regardless of the capacity. So that's good news. Um, the other news is I did this random write test to find out if there are SMR drives and they are not. Um, the other thing that might be interesting if you're running, um, if you're running this uh, FIO commands is looking at the logs. They have latency out. Uh, you can look at the min, max, and average latency with each standard deviation for every IO command. You can look at the latency histogram buckets. So if you're trying to look at the read quality service, you can look at the percentile for latencies. It's super powerful. There's all kinds of, there's a million other things that FIO does that uh, I don't have time to go into today, but uh, this is just should be a quick introduction of like how to benchmark your drives. If you wanna mess around with uh, seeing how fast drives are in Linux, uh, FIO is the tool to use. So with that, thanks guys, JN, bye-bye.